You know, it has a brilliant memory. People who watch my other channel, Business Blaze. Ask anyone and they tell you watching Business Blaze is like having all of the world's knowledge downloaded into your brain all at once. For one fleeting moment, you're the wisest man in the cosmos and then it's all gone all at once because you know nothing. Because that's just too much data for one person to handle. But hey, don't let me tell you what you can or can't handle. You can check out my potentially drug-fueled rants there using the link in the description below. Allegedly. If you've ever been particularly forgetful or inattentive, somebody's likely told you that you have the memory or attention span of a goldfish. According to a widely held belief, these popular aquarium dwellers possess almost non-existent memories, forgetting everything in as little as three seconds. But as we've covered before on this channel, while we humans love our animal-based metaphors and idioms, when it comes to biological accuracy, we seem to be rather bad at them. For example, lemmings don't commit mass suicide, ostriches don't stick their heads heads in the sand, and not all sharks must keep constantly swimming to stay alive. And goldfish, as it turns out, have far better memories than most give them credit for. The common goldfish, Carassius auratus, is a member of the family Cyprinidae, which includes several East Asian species of wild freshwater carp. Bred in China for thousands of years as food, goldfish were originally silvery gray in color like their wild ancestors. However, sometime during the Jin Dynasty from 266 to 420 AD, a genetic mutation led to the emergence of bright yellow or gold individuals, which were soon exclusively bred for use in ornamental ponds. They were especially popular with the Chinese imperial family, who even forbid commoners from owning yellow goldfish, as yellow was the traditional imperial color. Goldfish breeding flourished in China for over a millennium, first reaching Europe via Portuguese traders around 1611 and the United States around 1850, where they have remained popular as pets ever since. While it is not known exactly where or or when the notion of goldfish having a three-second memory first emerged, it has become an extraordinarily widespread and pervasive myth. According to Colin Brown, a fish cognition expert at Macquarie University in Australia, what is baffling is that it's pretty much the same wherever you go in the world. In some places it's two seconds, and in others it's ten, but it's always short. What is especially baffling about the persistence of this myth is just how easy it is to disprove. Indeed, to Two of the most conclusive studies on goldfish memory were conducted by teenagers. In 2008, 15-year-old Rory Stokes, a student at the Australian Science and Mathematics School, conducted an elegant experiment in which he trained goldfish to associate a red-yellow brick with food. Every day, Stokes dropped the brick into the fish tank and sprinkled food around it. At first, the fish appeared wary of the brick and fled at the sight of it, but gradually came to associate the appearance of the brick with feeding time and began appearing as soon as it was dropped. Stokes then left the fish alone for a week before reintroducing the brick, yet despite the time delay, the fish remembered just as well as before. Indeed, the fish were able to remember the brick up to a month later, a classic demonstration of classical or Pavlovian conditioning. And for more on the horrifying true story behind those classic experiments, please check out our previous video, The Gruesome Truth Behind Pavlov's Dogs. Other experiments have shown that goldfish possess impressive spatial reasoning abilities and can retain information about their environments for six months or more. In a surprisingly sophisticated study that won the American Natural History Museum's 2015 Young Naturalist Award, a 15-year-old girl from Michigan trained and tested a batch of 40 goldfish using a series of mazes. One maze used with a control group was painted white and surrounded by a white screen to cut off any visual clues, while the others were transparent and surrounded with various objects like tables, chairs, and painted boxes, which could be rearranged to test the goldfish's dependence on external visual cues for navigation. These experiments revealed that, contrary to prior assumptions, that goldfish learn by trial and error and rote memorization. They are, in fact, able to form sophisticated mental maps of their surroundings and use these to navigate and locate reliable food sources. They are also able to retain these maps for months. Even when tested six months after training, the fish navigated the mazes more than twice as quickly as when first introduced. However, such long-term memory was dependent on the fish's learning being reinforced after a one-month interval, a finding consistent with many small animals like rats and mice. Studies by professional researchers have demonstrated equally sophisticated 
investigator behavior. In one experiment conducted by Callum Brown at Macquarie University, goldfish were taught to escape a simulated trawling net. The net had a small escape route in it, and the fish just had to learn where that hole was, and they learned that in about five trials. If you put the fish aside and test them a year later, they still remember exactly where the escape route is. Another study conducted by psychologist Phil G at Plymouth University found that goldfish are even able to tell time. G first taught goldfish to press a small lever to dispense food into their tanks. Once the fish had mastered this task, G narrowed the window in which the lever functioned to only a single hour each day. To his surprise, the fish were remarkably quick to catch on. The fish worked out that if they hit the lever around that time, they would get food. Their activity around the lever increased enormously just before the set hour when their food was dispensed. But then, if no food came out, they stopped pressing the lever when the hour was up. In a separate experiment, G taught a school of wild-caught fish to associate food with a particular sound played through an underwater speaker, then released them back into the wild. Five months later, when G played the same sound, all the original trained fish converged on the speaker. This finding could have enormous implications for the fish farming industry, allowing farmers to dispense with expensive tanks and open water enclosures. Fish could instead be allowed to live and mature freely in the open ocean before being called home for harvesting. The goldfish are capable of such feats of learning and memory should really come as no surprise as a fish with only a three-second memory would not last long in the wild. As Rory Stokes, the 15-year-old Australian researcher, stated in an interview, I mean, it never really seemed feasible to me that they had a three, five, ten-second memory because animals need their memory, so they build up over time a knowledge of where the food is. It seems pretty impractical for a species to evolve without these capabilities. Dr. Mark Webster of St. Andrews University in Scotland further sums up the findings of studies. A lot of people have the image of a goldfish with a three-second memory, and that's not the case at all. There is a lot of evidence now that fish are no dumber than birds or many mammals, and in many cases, they are just as intelligent. They can learn their way around mazes, they can learn to recognize other fish, and they can remember which individuals are better competitors. So given the wealth of evidence going back to the 1960s disproving the three-second memory myth, why then does the myth persist? Part of the reason may have to do with a long-standing misconception regarding evolution. For many decades following the publication of Darwin's On the Origin of Species, biological evolution was widely misunderstood by the public and even certain scientists as a linear process of continuous improvement with each link in the evolutionary train being more advanced or highly evolved than the last. Thus, fish, who are lower on the evolutionary ladder, were thought incapable of the higher cognitive functions of animals higher on the ladder, like mammals, and for a while this notion was supported by anatomic observations. Unlike mammals, fish do not have a cortex, the outer layer of the brain that allows them higher cognitive functions. Nor do they have a hippocampus or amygdala, structures responsible for encoding and storing memories. Thus, it was long believed that fish could not form proper memories and learned largely via simple reflexes. In 1996, however, a team led by Cosme Salas at the University of Seville conducted a series of experiments in which goldfish had various regions of their brain removed before being subjected to maze memory-based tests. The team found that two areas of the goldfish's brain, known as the medial and lateral telencaphalon, performed roughly the same functions as the hippocampus and the amygdala, allowing fish to store and access memories just as birds and mammals do. However, Cullen Brown believes there is another more personal reason for the persistence of the myth. I suspect it's got more to do with making us feel good about putting them in a tiny little bowl. It probably says more about us than it does about the goldfish. If goldfish only have three seconds and memories, the reasoning goes, then there is no harm in keeping them in a small, cramped fishbowl. But this is simply not the case, and pet experts overwhelmingly recommend giving goldfish plenty of space, variety, and stimulation in their tanks in order to keep them happy and healthy. Properly cared for, goldfish can live in captivity for more than 20 years. The world record holder for goldfish longevity, an English fish named Tish, was won by Peter Hand at a fun fair in Doncaster, Yorkshire in 1956. When Peter moved out of his parents' house to get married, Tish stayed behind, dying in 1999 at the ripe old age of 43. In conclusion, our fine finned friends are far smarter and more capable than we give them credit for. So I really hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below. Don't forget to subscribe. And as always, thank you for watching.